good afternoon. This session will be in Hebrew because uh, only Hebrew speakers are here. Um, <laughs> okay, so here we have uh, representatives of the uh, Israeli ecosystem. Um, you all know that Israel is considered as the startup nation. Um, and today, specifically, uh, we are focusing on smart cities and technology companies. Most of them are startups that provide solutions for smart cities. Uh, the, first, uh, the first company will be Empressed. Empressed is a global vendor of real time and uh, mission critical orchestration and optimization software. Uh, the team of Empressed was involved in the development of Iron Dome, uh, the Israeli air defense system, and now they apply their knowledge in real time data analysis to civilian sector, uh, namely smart cities. Rami Koren is a VP at Empressed. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay. Uh, I'll present Impressed. A uh, few words before we start. We're not actually a startup. We've been established for 19 years, and we've been around in many facets that are very relevant to what has been discussed today. I will show you a few things that we've done in the past and are still doing a few things that are in the verge of being created and we're involved in uh, new initiatives and uh, hopefully it will keep you awake and interested. Okay, so uh, the different areas that we're involved in, we're, about, we're just a little bit more than, 20, than 200 people. Two thirds are still doing defense. One third is doing uh, commercial applications, whether it's industrial IoT, smart city, security, and mainly energy and energy management at the forefront of the uh, energy markets today. Um, we've started, or the, the most famous system that we were involved in is uh, Iron Dome, and we're talking about uh, smart solutions for life, for everyday life. So Iron Dome is also a smart solution for everyday life. It helps to enable life in uh, harsh environments, but we're doing other things as well. So like I promised, few of the things that we've done over the year, we took our software platform. We're, I didn't mention it. We're a software company. We're a command and control or orchestration company, and we're very much into technology. Uh, we have a software platform that enables us to adapt to any specific vertical, as I will show here and uh, it one was our first uh, commercial application managing the fleet of a fleet of the cars they're uh, the most they're the biggest company in israel in this area in this area and also in south america and few other places in the world adopted our uh, command and control basic platform and have adopted it to the markets by themselves without calling us to program it or to set it up for them for Mekorot, which is the largest uh, water supply company in Israel, uh, we're doing uh, energy saving management and planning, as well as controlling the SCADAs to do uh, energy savings or optimal use of energy. Netafim is uh, cloud-based irrigation for agriculture. Uh, if we look at here at Bezek and Nokia, these are two early attempts in the smart city area from a few years ago. I will touch on why we believe this market didn't fly as, it, as we have expected it. Uh, we're doing energy management in uh, New Zealand 
and few other things in the area of energy and for the Israeli electric company we're doing the uh, security command and control IOT and uh, modern energy uh, functionality in these very days. Okay, this is another picture of the same thing. Like I said, uh, when we're saying orchestration, what does that mean? The bottom layer is connect and integrate with the physical layer of the domain in which we work. It can be sensors, it can be systems that connect sensors and bring the data to us, or it can be any vertical system. We correlate and orchestrate the data, which means we take the data from different types of sensors and correlate it to create one unified situational awareness uh, picture. Started in the defense area with command and control and took the same notions into other uh, commercial areas. We enable uh, to incorporate analysis and optimization algorithms in some of the systems, we're doing forecasters and optimizers ourselves. In other systems, into, we integrate into our platform third-party uh, algorithms if we find that there are algorithms better than ours, and there are. And the finalization of that loop is control and act, which means based on all this data, the system decides what should be done and it either present it to a human operator for him to take the final decision in action, or actually activates it, whether it's a command to a launcher to set an interceptor, or to a SCADA to operate a pump to bring up water, etc. Um, who is impressed? I would say we are strong at the process side and on the infrastructure of technology. I will say a few words about process side. Uh, relating to some of the things that were mentioned here earlier today and some of the other lecturers. I think that it would be correct to say that we revolutionize evolutions. And if we look at military going from radar displays, PPI dots on the screen, then to a digital display, then to create a local command and control, and then an overall net naval network, which is, if you want, a super organism, and I verified with Professor Pesic that it's a correct uh, implementation for a superorganism. We've been through that. In the world of IoT, in the world of uh, energy management, we're still doing that. And when I say revol revolutionize evolutions, I mean that the technology people see the potential and the capability to do something very fast. But life, as it is, slow it down whether it's regulation, whether it's adoption, whether it's politics, whether whatever. Things that you see that you can do sometimes would take 20 years to adopt and to, be, to, to get to the field. And this is part of what we've been through in our journey. Uh, in terms of people, uh, we have about 20% of our people as data scientists and algorithmic people, furthermore engineers and architects, developers, and that's the nature of the company. Um, our platform, the lower level is the connection to the physical world, whether it's sensors, DERS, and other assets or other systems, and at the top layer is the vertical applications. That's the technologies we incorporate. Few words about smart city. Smart city have been considered as an unfulfilled promise uh, for years, and some of the things here, we, we show things that we've looked at in the past and others, and we got to the conclusion that because of separate silos, separate stakeholders, different interests in different uh, verticals and organizational challenge, this have not happened. What we believe that can be done, if we take an example of what we do by fusing, fusing data from different trades. What we do in the energy world, for example, we flatten the demand, we trade energy or energy demand with the end customers. That is already happening in New Zealand and will probably happen even in Israel in a few years. <coughs> we control the time of the water heaters or air conditioning, saving energy by agreement with the customers and compensating them. And if we're looking at uh, other things that are happening, uh, EV chargers, 
for cars. Uh, we can play with the time of when the charging is done to get it at a lower rate. We can even pull uh, energy from the vehicle. V2G is vehicle to grid energy. And basically, the same thing can be done to reduce congestion and improve accessibility into cities once we have uh, the ability to intervene and negotiate with the different partners and allow them to negotiate between themselves, create time for value, that's, that will be another layer of con improving the city and allow, uh, allow these things to happen. Uh, what enables us to do that is one initiative that we're involved with called Andromeda, controlling autonomous cars reducing the amount of operators per autonomous car from one to one, to thousand to one, one operator per thousand cars. Once we get into there, this is our role, we're doing the command and control, and that allows us to control the vehicles and intervene in what they will actually do. That's something further to come. Smart Campus is an initiative we're doing together with uh, Barilan City Center, uh, Smart City Center, and okay, since we're short on time, I won't go into all of that, but uh, we are connecting to main data systems, all kinds of sensors and, and actuators, and getting situation awareness and getting value by trading uh, benefits between the different players within the campus. Thank you very much. The vision of uh, AD Night is uh, improving pedestrian safety and traffic control by leveraging mobile phones and connected devices for passive data collection while preserving people's privacy. Let's hear from the founder and the chairman, Dr. Ari Abir, how they do it. From my point of view, a smart city is data and how you manage the data. AD Knight is actually creating the data and the information for to know what is going on. Uh, AD Knight is a very young company. It was started about two and a half years ago. And the idea for the company came from Volvo, from the car uh, manufacturer Volvo. They said that the main pro problem that they have is the safety of pedestrian and how we can avoid a uh, accident with pedestrian. And that's come the idea that the company start work. Then let me a little bit explain about the technology and what we are doing. What we are doing actually is we are radio location of a system that is in the urban uh, area. Actually, everything now, everyone, cars, bicycles, motorbike, and people going with some source of radio that all the time is working. Although most of us think that if we close our phone, mobile, it's not working. It's still sending to the area some sign that we can know and we know them and we use them for this purpose. 
uh, from, if we know what we are doing, then we can go to different vertical, and we choose to go to the vertical of safety of pedestrian and traffic control. That's the two things. You can do this uh, other application for different things that it's not, we are not talking about them now. Okay, a little bit about the technology is actually if we assume that everyone is uh, sending or in a way has some radio locations, uh, he has a radio sensor on him himself, then we can actually find him. We can locate it and we're doing a radio location thing. What is radio location is we know exactly where is he in the area in accuracy of less than one meter. The time to take us uh, to get it is less than one min a second. We are talking about less than 100 milliseconds to find him. Uh, of course, uh, people, the first question that uh, people ask us, what is the privacy? Then the company, when we started it, we built it according to all the regulations of the GDPR for uh, uh, privacy. We don't know who is the person, but we have a lot of information about the people that use. We know if it's a Mercedes car or a Volvo car. We know if the pedestrian listens to music or is uh, talking with his friend. We don't know who, what he's talking, but we know exactly what is uh, what he's doing. And this is the basic of the information uh, that we know who is the people. Then if we uh, sample them in a very quick, uh, fast system, then we know also the path that they are moving. That's the real uh, uh, philosophy about the system that we develop. Uh, okay, I go. One thing that come out and a lot of people ask us is, okay, how you know? Our system is a passive system. Actually, we don't need you to cooperate with us. In the, uh, the point is that you have a source of energy and we know how to find it. It's our problem to find you, it's not you. Then it's a completely independent system, not depend of anyone. That we know everything that what happened or happened in the area. Okay, this is different uh, system that everyone of you can see that uh, we can detect them in a very easy way. For example, one of the problems that we have faced in Israel is the scooters. Uh, we know most of the scooters, it's uh, a project that we are doing with the municipality of Tel Aviv, that we know who is the operator of the scooter because each scooter has a signature, a radio signature that we know we can keep it and know it. Then we know if it's operator A, B, or a private operator, and then who is the manufacturer of the private operator. But we don't know who is the user. We don't deal with this. Uh, what is the novel, okay, about the point is it's a real novel technology allowing us to detect everything in the uh, urban um, space and assuming that you have any uh, radio or something that send a signal to us. This is the one thing for, if it's a child or a baby and he doesn't have a mobile, then we can't know that he's on the road. Okay, uh, the second thing is the accuracy at, and the prediction that we develop to know how you path at what is the way that you are moving in the area. This is the two things. The second thing is that we don't depend of weather, we don't need uh, any uh, things of uh, can be disturbed uh, information and we're looking at uh, 360 degrees around what is going on. <coughs> okay, what is the, f uh, for traffic uh, monitoring, wh what we're controlling, if we look on the controlling, we detect the road sidewalk traffic is limited. We can see a sensor that light of signs that you don't need it. Then we can put, on, for example, on the bus station, we can know how many people can in the bus station, who is the people that cross in the zebra road or they are crossing in different things. We know exactly what happened in this corner. In some way, we can do it 
uh, in very accurate uh, way. If compared to GPS, for example, we are four times less, uh, more accurate than GPS because the accuracy of GPS now they are talking about two or three meter. We are talking about less than one meter accuracy. Then if a um, pedestrian is walking on the pedestrian and we know, then we know that he's on the pedestrian and not on the road. It's a, I skip a little bit of a use case. One of the goals that uh, we put for us is to uh, what we call, it's a US uh, program, it's called a, a safe route to school. Actually, most of the people, and I think uh, it's mentioned before about accidents around the school. One of the things that we know that it's happened because kids really know the way they are doing it twice a day, they know exactly the path that they are going. Also, the car that is coming to pick them up, they know exactly the place, and all the alarm system that they're putting around school doesn't matter. No one took a look about it. Then we decided that we, uh, one of the first projects that we are going to do is around school, to save and to keep the children that we can find them, and then put a mechanical or by using any app, to understand, to know that something is going wrong. Be careful. In the same time, we can send the same message also to the car that's coming or to the vehicle that's coming to this point. Okay. Uh, if you want, would like, and you, I want to show you, this is the size of the system. It's a very small system. This is a, a version one uh, that it's uh, without any uh, engineering, but it's, we can put it in any, any place in the city, and that's it. It doesn't need anything. Uh, the second thing is about the system that we would like to say is that, uh, th that we can do a dive safety alert to everyone. Then we can go into the system, for example, if it, you have a ways, we can go into the ways and say the message, be careful, that's it then it doesn't, again, we don't need any permission from after other people. Uh, we are lucky, and we have the first project, commercial project in Israel. We are doing now, we are uh, building and starting to put the system between Tel Aviv to Haifa. First stage, it will be uh, about 10 kilometers between Tel Aviv, uh, ben, uh, between Ercelia and Atania. This is in center of Israel, and we put our system, and it will go to the central of the road operator, the main road operator. Later on, we will open that. Uh, the f I would like to tell only one thing about the first project. Our first project was uh, according to the COVID. The municipality of city of uh, Fasaba told us that they don't want, they don't know how to behave with people that gathering in the park without permission. Then we put our system and between, if it was more than 10 people, more and more than 15 minutes, it was alarm in the city or, uh, center and then they sent the city police to find and uh, to put it. Okay, thank you very much. The, okay, uh, Saiwat, what Saiwat offer is uh, that uh, the water supplier across the globe, they offer a solution for them for real-time water quality monitoring. The CEO, Thor Alperin, is with us and he will present uh, their solution.
Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Professor Yaniv to end the delegation and everyone that orchestrated such a marvelous event. Uh, thank you very much. Um, SIWAT is a combination of cyber and water. That's the name. We would like to protect city water grids, same as a computer grid protects and in a way like cyber protection. And this is the name. SIWAT is a small company. It's a startup opened uh, mid-2017. We are 10 people. And we came into the idea that the water we drink, we use, is basically today in this uh, ev evolution of IoT, the water are not safe anymore. Water distribution system are vulnerable to many things. Deteriorating pipes, old ones, all the years. P sewage pollutions. Workers that accidentally connect system to another one not without any deliberate attention, like a guy a few years ago from a city somewhere that hooked up a, a diesel truck into the water system. It happens. Earthquake can fracture pipes, water pipes, and pollutants can come in. And in the last years, we are facing also cyber attacks on infrastructure of water trying to damage the water we are getting from the municipalities and by poisoning them or erupt, doing some kind of havoc in the system. In Florida, a few, uh, three months ago, a guard walked and saw a cursor of the mouse moving alone. So they passed all that, all the uh, defenses of the cyber and managed to go into the computer that mixes the water with certain materials that goes up to the public. And he accidentally saw it and stopped it. They wanted to put in 1,000 more doses of soda caustic, which is a very, very uh, problematic uh, substance, to poison the people. And what, but, but it was caught on time. Events on a nutshell from the last years all around us, the world, creating havoc in water for many, many populations, because water is life. Today, all over the world, you will be surprised. Water are checked manually and sporadically all over the city. The regulation is six to seven points of water sampling for 100,000 people. Guys going with samples, taking water, and going to labs, doing the checks. 22, 24 hours, 48 hours, and then, if it's okay, the next check will be a week later or two weeks later. That's what's going all around the world. Some companies build water analyzers, checking some parameters, pH, conductivity, turbidity, um, chlorine, and such a wall of systems with clusters of sensors is about 20,000 euros. You cannot put this in every neighborhood, of course, and you have to maintain it. And even if something happened, you have to analyze what happened, why the parameters changed, and, and then start to treat the problem. We call all of this condition, which is the daily life of everyone today, in a $38.4 billion market, unsafe. SIWAT has developed a multi-parameter sensor all in one box, Today, the Gen 1 looks like a chubby desktop, the gray one. And in, in the system, we have several sensors. Two of them are unique propriety development sensor, sensor that we uh, uh, build. And it's optical sensors, like Professor uh, Zalewski said, that this field is very vast and growing all the time. Without the use of reagents, with only a sample of 60 milliliters of water, we do a special anal analytic test on the full spectrum, and we get in every cycle of check, which is every 10 minutes, which is real, real time, 7,000 parameters. This cluster of parameters, this huge data, enables us to give you a specific signature detection of the material. 
The Gen 2 would look like a sh small shoebox, and of course, the price of it will be much smaller. All these devices are broadcasting to the cloud with three layers of analysis. Each, each box, each sensor on its own, the grid time and space of everyone, and the library of database of specific signature detection we have uh, accumulated. I've already explained about this. So we want to put our sensors at every main junction in the city. We can also know where the water are flowing and the fast, how it's spreading it. And if we detect uh, contamination, we know how fast it's been uh, deployed all over the city. So we can give it a decision supportive to the city to close valves and close the parameter of an infected area. Today, if there is a pollution, everything runs throughout the city and, and you cannot stop it. So this is another issue. A big ROI, at this point, usually the people are, uh, start to listen to me, more than just safety, because ROI is a word that everyone likes, because we will deploy our sensor in many, many places all around the city. We can also predicament the pipe deterioration condition and tell the city just change the pipe because we recognize pipe particles deterioration with our sensor. So they can just change the pipe on this section of the street and don't open the whole street. Also, we can forecast water leaks before they happen because we can monitor pipe de deterioration. Israel Head of Water Security and Cyber, Mr. Danny Lecker, is a big supporter of uh, CYWAT, as you can see from the letter he gave us. Actually, we have an understanding with the authority that after we will finish the three pilots we are starting uh, this month, by the end of this month, paid pilots. Uh, once the, we finish the pilots, and within one year, we are going to get a mandatory, obligated regulation to be installed all over the city. Other companies that do same things are indication monitoring. Okay, all, all the parameters that are being presented by other companies are indicatory parameters. No one gives you the result of what's inside the water. We detect hormones, 200 nanometer par parts of plastic, E. coli, iron, uh, sulfur, um, many, many materials we test and put inside in our database all the time. So specific signature detection. Iron check is being done. You know, people know how, uh, what's the, once in every three or four months. I can do it in every 10 minutes. Real, real time protection. We have a team of experts. Many of them uh, are from bar -Ilan University. Actually, it's a great honor and uh, a pleasure to sit inside the bar -Ilan and inside the Smart City Hub, where all the academia are around us, and in one phone call, we get solutions. Uh, that's thanks to Professor Yaniv who invited us to be inside bar -Ilan and work there. So we have professors and experts in optical, in ML, in ML, in artificial intelligence. Everyone that works for us is the head of the faculty. So the best minds are working, in the, are working with the company. Of course, with doctors running the lab and uh, also with experts from other fields. So CYWAT is planning to be the next generation of OEM sensor uh, company that gives services not just to municipalities, but also for the industrial use, food and beverage, hospital, army bases, basically <coughs> everything that uses water and needs to, to see the water is safe and clean all the time. Thank you very much. The next company is definitely not a startup. Uh, Mer, Mer Group, um, actually, they have been around at the cutting edge of technology for nearly four decades, uh, which requires not only endless resources, but also true dedication and boundless creativity. Hanan Eliav, please. Uh, 
Hello, all. Uh, so as uh, Professor Yaniv just mentioned, we are not a startup company. We are almost four decades, and uh, we have been around uh, smart cities for quite a lot of time. Our, new, our first version was released on the beginning of the 2000s, when there was the uh, visit of the Pope in, uh, in Jerusalem, in the whole city. And Mayer was the company that was providing for all the security uh, arrangement and security sensors uh, in the whole city. So we were requested to come up with a, with a solution. And I think that this is also showing, the, from our perspective, the evolution. Because on the beginning, there was a smart, uh, a safe solution, secure solution. And then there was a new layer that what, what we call today a smart cities. And we already see where it's going, and we see that it's going for already for smart uh, environments, okay? So um, the most important things for us is that the city will be smarter, safer, and of course, uh, with uh, the relevant intelligence uh, and information that we can get uh, from uh, all the relevant uh, third parties. In the last uh, two days, when a meeting that we had yesterday and also today, we saw and we heard about a lot of requirement, a lot of uh, application, a lot of services that grading a lot, a lot of data. And the idea is what you are doing with this data, okay? So what we are seeing from our side, what I call the triple P, okay? There is the uh, uh, predictive, the first P, then there is the preventive and the proactive. This is the, our, my, our philosophy that based on all the information that you are collecting today, if it's coming from an IoT, if it's coming from a sensor, if it's coming from a structured database or unstructured database, the idea is what you are doing with this information. Uh, yesterday when we've been when we, when we in the city hall, we saw a quite impressive uh, GIS uh, uh, application, uh, but as far as we understood, this information is collected for researches or for things uh, that will be used later on, and the idea is how you are using it in real time, online, and not only uh, collecting the information. Uh, so here you can see several of our cust customers, uh, customer types that we have. So you can see that we are serving enterprise, camp smart campuses, municipalities, airports, seaport, uh, law enforcement, and so on. And the beauty here is that we're using the same platform for all those uh, segments. And the reason that I'm raising it is because, <clears throat> as I said, we are already started to develop our software from the, from the 2000, and it's not that uh, comparing to a competitor that providing today a smart city solution, we have more elements or we have more uh, code lines. This is not the idea. The idea is that what we manage, we manage to bring from those kind of customer their uh, operational uh, concept. Okay, how the system need to behave if it's a, a, a police, okay, or if it's a municipality, or if it's an international airport that we are using the same uh, solution, or a, rail, a railway uh, company. Because each one of them bring you additional, uh, info, uh, additional uh, needs, tasks, and based on that you can build the, uh, what we call the SOP, a standard operational procedure that al allowing you to be online and to provide uh, information. Uh, our solution is tailor-made, meaning that we know how to come to a city, that it's already have definitely several of uh, VMS platform for cameras, different type of analytics, uh, different uh, water meter and so on. And we are not asking the customer to change anything on his premises, okay? So we know how to come to do the discovery session and then to build a, a tailored made solution that will be uh, fit for them. The solution, of course, is, uh, is secured. You can bear in your mind that if it's serving the Israeli police or if it's used in the Israeli international airport, it should be secured, and it is. And uh, it's uh, using a lot of BI. And when we are saying BI, uh, for example, I, uh, one of the examples that we saw today was a heat map. Okay, so what you are doing with the heat map? It's okay to, get, to bring the information and to see the different color, but, is, but the idea is that if, for example, the, the heat map showing a traffic 
okay, where are the most crowded places, where you have a lot of traffic, is how the system that is connected also to the smart traffic light will know to do the modification on the spot, okay, and not that somebody will need to do it manually later on. Here you can see a partial list of uh, uh, third parties or technology that uh, we already have a vast experience with, so you can see BMS for smart building, LPR, space recognition, counting, alerts, uh, uh, parking, things that related to enforcement, and so on. And one of the last trade that we are uh, seeing in the last two years is to use the system also for disaster. Uh, there is a one op big opportunity that now we are handling in Europe, in one of the uh, countries in, uh, in, in Europe, that we were requested to bring our solution in order to answer a uh, water flooding dis disaster. Okay, with a lot of dams that ne everything needs to be controlled, and here you're talking about uh, saving people, saving life, and so on. <coughs> uh, of course, like most of the companies that are providing a smart city solution, so we have the eyes, we have the camera, everything is based on a GIS map, analytics and information, and of course the management of the uh, uh, operational, uh, operational side. I will uh, skip and I will do it very, very fast. I would like to show you three examples. And uh, one first of all example that I would like to show you is what we are doing in Jerusalem. So in Jerusalem, uh, we are uh, serving the, uh, the, the, the police of the Jerusalem with our platform. And it's the eyes of uh, one of the most, let's say, sensitive places all over the world, okay? Uh, so uh, all, time, all the time that you're hearing about events that are happening there or preventing, how we're preventing the, the, those kind of events, it's using by this uh, platform. Um, we are also have a big city in Mexico, and the reason that I'm showing here is because we're talking about a city that have more than two million uh, citizens. And here it's same platform that used for security side, but also used for the daily uh, activities, meaning that uh, uh, we are connected to all the traffic, uh, sensor, pollution, uh, weather, uh, Co they, we, they use it for the COVID-19 as well, for crowded area and so on. And it's the one platform that giving uh, all those type of uh, uh, capabilities. And this is what we are saying about the data fusion that you need to do always with your platform. Now, bear in your mind that the same platform that mostly active in the outdoor, okay, because this when you are managing a city, usually it's in the outdoor, uh, will also give you the possibility to use it for the indoor meaning that if you have, a com if you have a campuses, a municipality building, and you know you want also to manage it on layer on, based on floor, so you have one holistic solution that can give you both a, a indoor and a outdoor uh, solution. Last example that I mentioned is the uh, Israeli International Airport in Ramon. So this is quite new airport, one of the last uh, airport that were just uh, uh, built, and they also uh, selected our uh, platform, and there you have, for example, 96 clients sitting in different rooms, uh, each one of them using it for different purpose. There is the one big command and control room, but there is also the technical room that usually used for the mayor or for the uh, commander in this case. Um, that's it. Thank you very much. This uh, panel, I think, uh, reflects the, the idea that uh, Smart Cities is a big umbrella that covers many aspects or all aspects of, uh, of life in the cities and the efforts to improve the lives in the cities from all these uh, aspects. We heard about the water, we heard about IoT and control, um, we heard about transportation. Uh, the last presentation is, is about uh, traffic plan automation, and the company is Mobi. Mm -hmm. And uh, Oria Ariel represents the company 
uh, here in the Czech Republic. My name is uh, Ori. I'm here, as the Czech are saying, plus minus autobus, 30 years. Kavana she'ani po akamut shel hashanim, k'mo sh'autobus magia. L'fomim ze sh'a, l'fomim ze af pam. I would like to tell you a private story for the end of the day. It's going to uh, be quick, I promise, so I will not prevent you from the glass of wine so promised. Uh, this is Sophie. She is the best product of me in this uh, country, I'm proud to say. And I am here for so many years doing what I believe in, and this is marketing or bringing to the Czech Republic the technologies of transportation, which could be, I think, benefit for everybody because in the end of the day, when you reach the place, this is what it counts. This is what they remember. Uh, mobility inside, or in short, I will call it MOBI, because to say mobility inside each time it will finish the time, is proud of its platform, which is called TIMAS. TIMAS is a special platform that is giving value to the road authorities. It's giving analytics, meanings, and within the market segmentation, it touches every single part of the consumer of the road, in green fields, in high demand areas, and in a solution which required dynamic pricing, which is lately the municipalities are trying to implement. TIMAS has three models, as you can see. One is called mobile or mobility aware and in this mobile aware we are collecting data and information i will show you shortly where it is coming from and it leads it to mobi predict that helps us to tell where all of this data will be channeled to so we can make some prediction in what's going to happen and then to assist the authorities, the police, the controllers, the pedestrians in making their transportation and the ways easier, faster. <coughs> TIMAS is a central turnkey solution which can be applied in many of your existing system, already is in many countries. It is collecting data from many different sources such as cameras, it was mentioned before that data is being collected to different various ways, but any sensor which emits or which is able to transmit data, we are able to integrate to our system and bring another layer of information which will help all the free modules to get you optimization of traffic either in a dynamic way online immediately, or creating reports which help you to do it. The system is looking forward for the future. Some believe it's near future, some believe it's very far, but with my experience with public transportation, it's very near, and we think that autonomous in public transportation specifically is the way 
and the system is already integrated into def uh, different and various solutions. Some of them you have seen here, and some I'm dealing with as well. And they are helping you to create a solution which will deal with improving the service, with taking care of the existing and mounting, actually, uh, traffic jams, etc., and introducing a new ways for the municipalities how to finance it as well. I told you that this is a personal story. In my case, my daughter, she is uh, learning in a school by the Barandov Bridge. To the ones who don't know, this is one of the major complex of bridges uh, in the city, and right now it's been under reconstruction, which is causing everybody aggravation, especially my daughter, and she have instructed me through the big boss, of course, to solve it. And this is the main reason I'm here today. The demand analysis uh, driven system can see, you can see in here an example in Israel, taking a certain area or region, even the whole country, Mobi has been part of the uh, transportation um, effort in Israel to ease the situation, which is much, much worse than here, I can assure you, from personal knowledge and experience. Several graphs are here. I will not bore you with details. They lead to the fact that we can aggregate all the layers of different data and superimpose them on a meaningful system which can be brought to the knowledge of the consumer, if it is the traffic control center, police, or any other body which requires this data, either in real time or in historical ways. During the unfortunate two years that have passed, there has been also a push for and a huge changes in uh, the habits of people, in uh, uh, closing of schools, in handling events, in taking the work to home instead of office, and there have been a huge demand into getting this data into the correct bodies which can interpret it, and this is where we are involved the most. The Intelligent Mobility Center, for example, of a certain city, I will not again drill through the data, but on one side, it's presenting a unified data set to the controller. It can create a lot of simulations. So in the Barandov case, if we could have studied it several months before, we could have created scenarios that right now they are trying in real time on you. Okay? And each time that you see some traffic in the city, there is a high chance it's due to that. So my daughter here, as you can see, is she is a little bit happier. Uh, the steering wheel is indeed a pink cover. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, and if you have any questions, I would really, really like to ask you now. I made it on purpose quick. So you can ask that the corona created the virtual um, events much more stronger and watching us now are more people than here in the, in the crowd, but I would love it if somebody could ask me even one question. Thank you. Um, thank you. Actually, we have uh, questions from the crowd for ah, okay. some of the presenters, so... Uh, Peter will, will uh, read the questions. Uh, yeah, you can return to your place and Peter will... Uh, if, if, I, if I may just, uh, you know, following the Slido technology, there's been like five or six questions uh, during the debate. I will try to sort it out quickly. Um, there is a question I believe that could be addressed to all of you, uh, distinguished presenters, and this is... Uh, if I may rephrase it, um, it says like uh, 
your technology is being developed for specific purposes, but at the same time you speak about integration of your technologies into a smart solution that combines uh, uh, data and, and technologies. So when you, you develop your own applications uh, on water or traffic, do you think about other needs of people so that your product could be combined with other products, uh, for example, from market point or the development of your technology? This is a question raised, uh, I think, any one of, of you. I can try answer. Uh, the way that uh, the way that uh, we are, I'm talking for Mer. So the way that we are building it uh, for us, it's a matter of object. Water is an object. Traffic light is an object. Um, everything uh, considered as an object, and then you are not limited to uh, to specific uh, domain. Still, it's based on that that you are coming with the right third-party solution, so it's not replacing the, the solution of, uh, uh, for example, uh, what is a tour is just uh, mentioned, uh, but I am talking about from the management side, meaning that it's, uh, I don't like to use it, but some of my colleagues saying manager of managers, okay, so I don't like it because, because I think that uh, it's coming with uh, its own uh, powerful uh, uh, offering. Uh, but this is uh, this is the idea. So the idea is how to collect everything together and how to bring the the value in real time. Uh, as I mentioned in my uh, presentation, we are t we talked about water, but the key word is fluids. So we can address other fluids in the future. If it's uh, as long as it's a, it's a little bit transparent. We, we, Remember, uh, we are working with spectrometry, and we need absorbance and reflection from data from the sample. So as long as the material is more or less transparent, uh, we can face also irrigation water, which are dirtier. Uh, so Agritech is also an option. A uh, very big company uh, called Netafim approached us, and they want us to check uh, bacteria accumulation in, in, in their drip, drips a problem they have all over the world. So we did experiments last week and I'm happy to say that we can detect specific images of after treatment, before treatment, and they are very excited, which is a big option and client for the company. Uh, yes, but fluids, if it's a particle of iron in oil of engines, as long as the, the fluid is a little bit transparent and allows the light absorbance and reflection. So other fields as well, yes. I like, I like just to add that uh, in uh, Mobility Inside, we are already involved in projects which required uh, a vehicle to traffic light, uh, and that gives priority to emergency vehicles when they are coming into a certain junction or to a certain uh, lane which requires to give them priority. Our system is, we can divide it to two levels. The first level is an independent unit that operates by our own, doesn't include, it can actually, we create data and we can move it and send it to the customer client. The other uh, level is that we can send, because as I said, I mentioned before, we are creating data and every radio system, we can have the information and we don't mind if a customer came and said, we would like, for example, some of a in working area, they would like to put this system on tractors for digging. Okay, from our point of view, it's exactly the same. Then, then we connect uh, with other companies that can do it. We are not specialists in the, this kind of thing. Then we divided two or three products that can uh, fit what the client wants. I think in our case, I think in our case, the answer would be goes without saying. I think on the second or third slide, I showed uh, the different, many different domains to which we provide solutions. It's all done with the same platform. Actually, it's a platform that have gone through two and a half generations in terms of technology, but it is still at every given point in time 
the same platform that is adapted to different domains because of, and I think Elihav mentioned that, uh, uh, Hanan mentioned that as well, if you do the right abstractions when uh, you, you define the system, uh, it enables you to adapt it to different domains fairly quickly and achieve the reliability and ruggedness and field provedness that this, your system has. I will just add some, some, some last sentence. Uh, it's, I think that it's going well with what Professor uh, David Passing said about creating a language. So if you are going and creating a language, then you no know, matter what kind of domain you're talking about. If you want to answer all the questions, so the answer should be shorter, please. Well, now there is, there is one more item. It's not a question, actually, it's a comment, and it goes to Mr. Abir. And uh, the comment reads as follow. I will shorten it up. Uh, I like the idea to make the smartphones instruments of s safety or traffic safety rather the other way around, because most people feel in the, are in danger because of constant looking into the, their smartphones. So this is a comment uh, from the from the from the public. Uh, possibly the, a more general question is uh, again uh, how you make uh, your entrepreneurs uh, the public authorities to actually for, for you develop your technologies for the public, uh, how you make them to understand what's what's the advantage of your of your of your technology. There was a reference uh, regarding schools and the, school, the, 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 the traffic safety around the school. So uh, do you have any experience you, or it might be unique for Israel or do you have any experience that might be generally shared how to promote these technologies? Okay, uh, because this is my fourth startup, uh, then I can say my, for my experience about it. It's a very hard work uh, to explain what you do sometime you go to your friend and talk about your technology, they think it's, they don't understand your, what you are talking about. Other, the second stage is they are telling you, ah, somebody did, did it or make it much better than you. And then the financial problem, but at the end you have to believe, listen to the market, and then to promote it and don't give up. And if you make the bad decision, stop it. Don't put more money on it. This is the fourth thing that I can do. Thank you. A very difficult question for Moby. Can you predict the traffic and traffic jams, for example, regarding the famous uh, Barandowski Moss? Uh, this is the main bridge in Prague. Actually now causing an uh, absolute collapse in Prague of traffic. Absolutely, that's why I'm here, and we are already doing this all over the world. There's been um, in Atlanta a Super Bowl several years ago, and we have there, uh, in the study case, reduced dramatically the conjunctions concerning this biggest event in a year. Thank you very much. Uh, possibly last question uh, to Saiwat. Uh, the, this is uh, about the applicability f uh, of, your, of your technology, not only for uh, quality management of the water uh, on another level, obviously, but uh, uh, whether your technology can be utilized in terms of uh, facing the scarcity of the water, because the, 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 the water is going to be more and more uh, I would say in short supply, so what would be the advantage of your approach to actually face this problem with the uh, warming and so on and so forth? Uh, actually, we detect uh, contamination in water. Uh, we, uh, the scarcity of water throughout the world is a problem and that makes the water bad uh, or worse to detect. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot solve the problems of the world in uh, human uh, uh, polluting the cycle of rainwater and the water becoming more and more uh, polluted and problematic, but we will want to ensure until 
uh, Dr. Pesic's vision will come through that the water that we drink and use uh, uh, will be at least clean and safe to drink. Uh, we, there's also a, a safety or security issue to the system as we also have the appointment from the Ministry of Security to detect uh, uh, materials that could use as a terror attack uh, into the system. So multi-level of protection is also an advantage. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope I have not uh, omitted any question. I tried to merge some of them. So uh, for them, for the time being, that's it uh, for the question from the audience and people who are still online with us. So uh, I give it back to you, Al, to conclude the session. Okay. So I will conclude by saying thank you very much for your presentations. Thank you for coming with this delegation. Uh, to this conference, which was really interesting and uh, a starting point of, uh, I hope, many collaborations and partnership uh, here in Czech Republic and in Israel. You are all invited to come to visit uh, in Israel um, and hope to see you soon. Before we conclude our, our meeting today, uh, just bear with me just one more minute. Uh, I would like, obviously, to uh, thank all of you. You have uh, joined us. Uh, in my view, it has been a, a tremendous and a increment, a incredibly interesting event. I think uh, the discussion has shown how important the, uh, the uh, issue of smart solution to our life in our urban areas or outside actually, as was underlined by, by uh, Dr. Biskova is, uh, we would like to avoid the worst case scenarios that were so, I would say, dramatically painted by Professor Pasig, but I think uh, many of uh, uh, his messages should be taken very uh, much seriously. Uh, I would encourage everyone who is o over here in the room or still uh, online with us or will follow uh, the stream uh, that will be then uh, recorded at YouTube to keep in touch, via the, especially via the technology, digital technology. We have uh, uh, established the LinkedIn event for you uh, to, to, uh, to communicate uh, today or tomorrow or on Friday even, because as I uh, understand, I would like to underline, this is not the end of the Smart Week in Prague. Uh, this, uh, this forum we are going to continue tomorrow at, uh, uh, with another conference on Smart Cities to which uh, you have been all invited. And I give uh, the floor over to Professor Sweet. So I would like also uh, thank you, for Professor Yadif, for this uh, event. And uh, I can imagine that uh, all public is exhausted after this uh, Smart City Day, but uh, the Smart City continue. And uh, tomorrow at uh, 9 o'clock, uh, they will start our eighth uh, venue of uh, Smart City Symposium Prague in a minority monastery. and. I am very proud that uh, Professor Yanif will be the first keynote speaker in this conference. So all companies and all our Israeli friends are invited, of course, on this event. And thank you one again. So for once again, uh, I hope that we are going to have a little bit smarter weather even tomorrow, because it will not be raining, uh, I believe. So uh, thank you very much. It has been a great day with you, and see you soon. Thank you.